dealing with it right now with Colton Pearson is revealing that the cowards literally have taken over the church. Now, I think, you know, one of the greatest examples of why you say, Prophet Tamir, why you say, you know, the cowardly Christian, the cowardly Christian is literally taking over the church. Because one thing we do is, especially in particularly the black culture, when we believe something, we're the loudest in the room as a culture group. We're, we're loud people. You know, if, we, if somebody say something about your friend, you can be like, wait a minute now. You know, if somebody talk about your mama, guess what? You're going to stand up and you're going to hurt them. You're going to be the loudest person in the room to say, you're not going to talk about my mama. You're not going to talk about my sister. You're not going to talk about my friend. And then we're going to go, we going to, you're going to be bold. You're going to be courageous. And guess what? You and many people, if that, if the spirit of the fight hasn't come out your soul, you're going to want to fight. None of the rules of society applies in that moment. Cultural compliance does not apply to you in that moment. If somebody's talking about your mother, being a law abiding citizen does not apply to you in that moment because that's your mother and she birthed you and nobody in the world better talk about your mother. But for some reason, when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, the sinless God, I think last I heard, he's the sinless king of kings, not just a king, but the sinless king of kings and the sinless Lord of lords and the sinless creator who had the audacity to say, I'm going to spend over 30 years in this planet and to walk the filth of creation, come into the cursed world where time and space exists. And actually, I created it all and dies on this nasty cross, go inside an earthly body that goes and descends into hell, takes the gods and the nations back, and by the way, takes you back too. All of a sudden, we become law-abiding Christians. All of a sudden, I can't speak on the, the issue of abortion. Because I, you know, I may need to read up on that. All of a sudden, when it comes to the issue of church and clothes and, and priestly wear, I can't, I don't have a comment on that. All of a sudden, you want to be the peacekeeper when it comes to defending your God and defending your king and defending your creator. The cowardly Christian is in the church. We want to obey, obey every law concerning the love. I love you. I, you know, God is the God of love and I can't talk about my brother, but you will beat a person down if they talk about your mother. You will beat a person down if they talk about your race. You will beat a person down, but you won't do that for the Lord Jesus Christ. You won't even, not even say beat him down. You won't take a stand and boldly say that universalism is a doctrine of a death. Devil. You won't even make a you won't even make a statement like that. Because of the culture war of the institutional church. The religious church has made the rules and regulations and has decided what we can speak on and what we must be silent. So the holy are silent and the hellish are loud. The hellish are literally saying what shall be, what shall be stated and what you can communicate on social media, what you can preach on from the pulpits of the nation of Jesus Christ, what t-shirts you can wear. The institutional church, uh, which is the hellish church, has taken over the pulpits of the Lord Jesus Christ. So now the war is on. The battle for the holy to be able to say, am I, I want you to ask yourself, if you're watching online, I want you to say, am I a cowardly Christian? 
Do I find myself trying to literally abide by all the rules and regulations of Christianity when it comes to literally wanting to take a stand for something that's unpopular? Do I feel like I have to be muted by society when it comes to speaking on things that are holy? But Jesus Christ stood in the temple and ripped it apart. And Jesus Christ, he goes forth to say, but this temple and those that come before me must regard me as holy. Now we have to make a decision. And it's in this season, I hope you all are taking time before this year is out to identify is that where are the cowardly markers in your soul? Am I a coward or am I eternal? I know this is hard, but we have to talk about this because now this is a silent devil that is moving throughout the nation of Jesus Christ. And if you're not speaking on love, if you're not talking about loving your brother and loving a sin and loving a deity, literally any, if you're not literally deifying devils, all of a sudden you got to be silent. You only can be bold for the doctrines of devils now. You only can be bold for statements of hell. You cannot wear Jesus Christ proudly in your soul anymore because of the institutional church. But let's talk about Revelations 21.8. Revelations 21.8 says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murders and whoremongers and sorcerers and what? Adolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which what is the second death. The fearful also the cowards. First one out the gate. Because I think when we are talking about the doctrine of inclusionism and this whole debacle that is going on, it has literally revealed a quiet force, a quiet prince. And it is the prince of the coward. It has slowly and quietly invaded and muted the holy nation of Jesus Christ. And people, if they, even though they may agree with you, they feel like I have to be quiet. I agree with you, but I can't talk about that. Now we'll talk about everything else. Loud, we're proud. We're going to be loud and proud about our favorite basketball team. We're going to be loud and we're going to be proud literally about your high school. You'll be loud and proud about what university you graduated from. We loud. Matter of fact, we loud in stadiums when we go to a football games and basketball games. We will write whatever, whoever the rival team is, you proud about that. We get on social media, okay, and you're going to talk about every, your team, why you love them, Super Bowl coming, and we have a social media wars about who was the best team and who was the worst team, why my team's better than yours. But all of a sudden, we have to be silent when it comes to the doctrines of devils that's infiltrated the institutional church. All of a sudden, we hoarse. We can't, <laughs> I can't speak my throat. Now, you were just loud over there screaming for the Dallas Cowboys. But when we're talking about this issue of the doctrines of devils and specifically now what's been going over the last couple of months, the doctrine of inclusion and the demonics in this thing, all of a sudden we're quiet. In order for this shift and change that Revelations 21, 8, but the fearful Literally, because at the end of the day, and we we saw it with the death of Jesus Christ, and as he was taking his walk to this cross, and the apostles began to literally what? Become what? Cowards. So there's something about when it's time to go to war with the king that the cowards, the spirit of the coward comes up. It's a silent force. 
as I was listening to this As I was listening to this individual, I couldn't help but agree with the part that I heard. When you talk about doctrines of the Christian faith, basically there are seven doctrines about who God is, the plan of salvation, the atonement of Jesus Christ, the dispensation apostasy, restoration, prophets and revelation, priesthood and priesthood keys, ordinances and covenants, marriage and family. These are the basic doctrines of the Christian religion. And every last one of them has been attacked in social media, on the television, school systems, and so forth. The Bible says in Psalm 11 and three, when the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Galatians two and 18, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I prove myself a transgression. Even in the book of Jude, it talks about people who crept in unaware. Jude, the first chapter, verse four. For there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. But these speak evil of those things which they know not but they, what they know naturally as brute beasts and those things they corrupt themselves. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouth speaking, great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, central heaven, not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now to him that is able to keep you falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. I don't know about you, but I'm going to stick to the old way, the old way in which my parents taught me that holiness is right, and without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I'm going to stick with what I've been taught with the basic doctrines. Uh, I love Carlton Pearson. There are many good things I can say about him, but I do not agree. I do not agree. I'm sorry. I do not agree. Uh, you can't live any kind of way and walk into God's uh, heavenly gates. You can't do anything and do everything. Uh, and also, um, and I do believe that there is a place, the Bible, where people are being punished for not doing the right thing. And it's just too many scriptures. I'm gonna to stick to the old way that uh, my parents taught me and uh, 
because the, their way worked and they had power with God. Because the Bible tells you outside are the dogs, those who did not listen to God's word, those who were insensitive to God's word, those who chose to live in corruption. Outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practice falsehood. You got to think, what are they on the outside of? And who's on the inside? If the scriptures keep telling you over and over again that the people who follow God are on the inside and on the outside are the dogs. Now I have to get ready to go to work. I, I'm gonna have to uh, work on this some more. But I also want to say something about these Christmas trees. Uh, Jeremiah 10 verses one through five. And I'm going to go back and listen to this lady uh, messaging in that entirety. Uh, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Why do these uh, sanctified people have Christmas trees in the sanctuary? Why are you doing it? These are pagan ways that are, are spoken against in the Bible. I don't care how pretty you think they are. I don't think how nice you think they are. These things should not be. And it's so evident that the church is not being taught and there's a great falling away and the standards that once were are gone. And that's why there's no power in the church, no anointing in the church. Uh, these people can't preach their way through a wet paper bag. When they pray, nothing happens. And they don't walk in dignity and in power. And you do not sense the love of God around them. And you do not even sense the power of God around them. I love you much and we'll continue this discussion.